Alright guys, time to go back again today. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far and the CDL is back on the menu later today. Going to be talking about the matchups here in just a few minutes time for this week. But also, there's been some more rumours and announcements regarding the World War 2 game we are supposedly going to have for CDL 2022. And also of course coming out later this year from Sledgehammer Games. The implications of that for some of these Pro League teams going forwards, especially given some players that didn't have the greatest time in the initial title, we imagine it's going to be a pretty similar one playing a relatively similar way. Same developer, same game name. What does this mean and what does Scumbo Form will have to say on the matter? Intrigued to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Like if you guys enjoy the video, subscribe if you are new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. It really helps out the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that. And if you'd like to ask a question in the Q&A, this is in the community tab, so it might not come up automatically for you guys. You might have to go manually search it. I'm not sure I can link this directly in the description or anything. But if you go to the community tab on mobile or on desktop, then you can find this post. And if you drop a reply in there, if you've got anything to ask, then I'll go through and choose some ones and make a video in a week or so's time. Hopefully that'll be a good way to give back to all your guys phenomenal support 250k and as you can see we are well well breaking through that number certainly let's talk about this then first of all so Miami strike was announced yesterday from track I thought it was going to be in the game already but I'm not sure I can find it quite as of yet but yeah sun's up guns up Miami strike comes to 6v6 next week with a new close waters layout and 24 7 playlist now this map already like look how much better it looks in the daylight than the current Miami we have at nighttime I think if they just did this entire makeover to the normal map that honestly would be a great step in the the right direction. I think I'd love to see that because the normal map to me plays pretty well for search and destroy. This map might be too small. There has been some questions as to whether this could actually be playable in a competitive play in some of the respawn game modes. But um, yeah, I'm not personally sure that's really going to happen, especially when we look at it from a close up perspective. This, of course, is normal Miami, as you can see, like pretty damn big map. And this is the section in the bottom left hand corner where, um, well, where they've taken this smaller version. And honestly, it might be even smaller than Crossroads. And Crossroads is pretty small, and um, well, that effectively had to get removed from the rotation because it was just too small and it was just a box and the spawns didn't make any sense so probably we're going to see a similar thing here and it, you know it does beg the question like look at the end of the day we have the opportunity maybe to bring back standoff if you were the developers but instead you decided to make this smaller version of Miami and still it might not be viable for competitive but of course their, their focus is not competitive so we totally get it but again this is what the map looks like right now I'll just compare it real quick to uh, well exactly the map looks like for the original so as you can see right here this is the section of the map which has been changed and there are actually some relatively significant changes so if I just like swap between the two, you can see this like uh, whatever this truck is right here has been changed the direction. I think it's like a little van that sits right here. Also, there's this back alley around the side of the garage, which has um, just been added to the game as well. So honestly, this might be quite a nice change to have for the full map. But um, yeah, kind of makes sense. Maybe it's too small for competitive. I would have liked to see some other maps back in the game. Also thought this was really interesting that Paradox points out yesterday. Nice update to the Codcaster you can see right now. So attack, defend, sides and lives are now um, well visible on the Codcaster. This is something we've had in previous previous games but it's nice to have it finally in this title as well because um, you guys have certainly seen that when you know when you're playing search and destroy it's tough to actually tell who's alive because they kind of get darked out if they die but then you have to look through and they're like okay is this guy alive is this guy dead okay is it a 2v1 is it a 2v2 you kind of have to like mentally piece it together and uh, now it's going to show the lives remaining in the middle as you would expect that is great to see and then also in control so typically in control it will show you like under the team how many respawns they have remaining but I, I think especially for new viewers it can be a little bit of different difficult to wrap your head around that okay this is the amount of respawns but once the respawns have run out they can still live but then they just don't respawn again so like they have 26 respawns to start it's a little bit confusing it was better the way it was in black ops 4 it was just like how many lives have you got left okay seven lives that you know means three respawns plus four lives if you want to look at it from that perspective but mainly it's like okay is it a 1v1 oh yes it's a 1v1 this is going to be pretty interesting so that's a nice way a nice step in the right direction at the very least and let's talk a bit about call of duty world war 2 vanguard so this supposedly is the fictitious timeline where World War II didn't end in 1945. The idea being that, okay, like, you know, we had the rumours initially that it was a game set in the 1950s, I think, which is why people were talking about maybe Korean War, but supposedly maybe, like, um, let's say the World War II, like, extended fictitiously through to 1950s, maybe that's kind of how they're doing it, so I'm sure this is going to be great for, like, the campaign side of things, for what they can do with the game, the creative freedom they can have. It's probably going to be really good for that side of things, and, you know, of course, there's going to be war zone integration, all this type of stuff, that's just how it goes nowadays. 
is. And the game will probably play very similar, I would imagine, to how World War II did initially that came out in 2017 now. Because at the end of the day, it's a World War II title developed by the same developers. We can imagine it's going to have that you know, similar slow methodical style that World War II did have. And um, yeah, to be honest, that was very different from what we had had just the previous year in the Jetpack era games. And there were a lot of, uh, well, there was a lot of discussion regarding some of the teams and some of the players that were good in those uh, previous titles and then, well, didn't have the greatest time. And certainly, I mean, these cast color titles, I mean, the slide cancelling is all over the place. Like um, bunny hopping, for example, in Modern Warfare, whereas World War II didn't have any of that. Like the, the most crazy thing you could do in terms of movement was like the punch dive. You punched the air and then you dived. I mean, like it didn't even have a slide in the game. And um, yeah, certainly Abizu was pretty cracked on the game regardless because he was top of all the, uh, the league play ladders. And also the league play system was great compared to what we've had in COD history. And also the game battles integration was as good as well. So certainly I think there's a lot of potential positives here from competitive Call of Duty, even though I can't say I particularly enjoyed this game to watch or to play when it initially came out. And certainly there's some players, Scumbered Formula especially, that didn't have the greatest years on that title. And well, they have a few words to say. Now on the other side of things, there were certainly some players that did have good years. Accuracy, Aixi even winning the World Championship on that game. Silly winning it alongside him. Slacked as well had a good year. And maybe if you are some of these pro teams, you're thinking, okay, hang on a second. Maybe these guys will play much better. And it certainly was true that a guy like Aix, for example, having done really not too much throughout the Jetpack era, comes into World War II and actually was a very solid player. Jcap as well, like he was, uh, I think, pretty underrated that year. Like, he, you know, of course, he comes off the Infinite Warfare World Championship where he had a very difficult run up against Optic Gaming in the Grand Finals. And then he actually comes in and is a very respectable player on Luminosity that season. So certainly the pacing and uh, the way it favoured players, okay, they kind of post up, they play very methodically. They play like as a team to get map control as opposed to just taking individual gunfights as a lot of the teams thrived off of in the Jetpack era that just preceded it. You would certainly saw a situation where some players came to the fore and some players had more difficult times. And uh, well, certainly Scump and Formal were two of the players that their squad broke up. The Dynasty broke up. We'll have a look at that in just a second here. And they have a couple of words to say on the matter and why Formal is kind of uh, well thinking it's been a good run for us boys. And, you know, maybe it's all going to come to an end. Hey, um, the, the, the production team <laughs> wrote the new COD leak. Was there a COD, Call of Duty leak that happened? I haven't, yeah, I haven't World seen War anything. II Vanguard. Wait, is that really a thing? Like, we're going back to World War II? Wait, is that what the leak was? Yes. And it's, it's all World, signs point towards World, World War, War II? next year. By who? Sledgehammer? Yeah. The, the people that did this, this, the first one? Huh? So the same people that <laughs> no, did the I... first one are doing the second one. He said it's been a good run. <clears throat> Yo, I, it's, we're not there yet. Let's focus on the rest of the season. Whatever. <laughs> Just go ahead. I mean, we're good. We'll just... We're Sounds good. fun. Yeah, we'll have a good time. Excited. And the discussion has certainly been these past few seasons, like when is Scump going to retire, right? He's had all these years at the top. He's achieved everything to be achieved in Call of Duty. You know, I'm sure he still wants to compete as long as he can be competitive. But, uh, you know, last time in World War II, it wasn't great. I'm sure, you know, rumors are circulating and people are discussing it. The fact that, okay, Scump didn't have the greatest time last time in World War II is probably like his worst year. Well, his worst like year ever as a competitor, I would say, was that year. And a fair bit of that probably came down to how the game was and it didn't really fit the team that he was playing in at the time and didn't fit his own personal style. And if that happens again, um, yeah, you do have to wonder whether, whether things are going to be happening here. But of course, that's still a long way away from actually coming to fruition. Things could certainly not go down that route. It may play completely different, of course. We're just speculating at this point, but it's certainly a discussion that uh, Formal was bringing up, especially because I'll just kind of share the history for you guys if you're not fully familiar with this. And a lot of you guys are pretty new to the scene. This is back in 2017 when Scumbird, Formal, Crim6, and Karma, the Optic Gaming Dynasty guys, won at the World Championship. Then they go into World War II. Initially, they look pretty good at Dallas, but then, you know, not too long after that, the team effectively collapsed. I mean, this uh, so series they lost at the stage one playoffs, the two best of fives, 10 map series to face clan at the time was, yeah, not great at all. And then they come top 16 at Seattle and then the team splits up. Karma gets put to the bench effectively and he stays there for the rest of the season. Crim6 stays on the team with Scump. Formal then goes to Luminosity and actually does pretty well towards the end, but they didn't get any better than top six of the world championship. And then of course the Opta guys bring in Octane and Methods and um, not the team they wanted. I'm pretty sure they wanted John. They wanted Zoom. I think they even maybe wanted Kenny or someone else, but they couldn't get him. And um, they had to set off a methods, which wasn't ideal because they effectively have three main assault rifles and Scump on a team. So Scump was largely left out to dry right here. And certainly coming off the season that Scump had just had, like completing the Dynasty run, winning the World Championship, to not even win an event was, um, well, certainly a massive step backwards. And in terms of like KD performance as well, I know Hex and I know uh, Crimson talked about this on the Eavesdrop podcast ages ago now, but discussing how this was pretty much Scump's worst year as a competitor. Like he wasn't, you know, necessarily all there mentally. And um, 
also in terms of performance, I mean, still 1.05 KD in respawn with an SMG in that game was pretty impressive. But um, yeah, it wasn't what he was doing in the previous year, where at the end of the title with the ERADs, Scum was an absolute dominant force on the map. So there were certainly some players, the likes of Methods, the likes of you know, Assault, some of these other Assault Rifles, that actually were very, very good with the Assault Rifle in hand in those games, and like Denz especially the 1.1, because slower titles in those type of fashions really favoured these type of players. And again, you know, guys like Scum, it didn't really favour them so much. If the game plays similarly once again, we could see a similar thing come to play. And questions I'm sure will be raised about what the future of this team might potentially be as formal did right there. And as Kevy Skill says as well, Call of Duty World War 2, not again. We looked at this the other day, of course. Top 24 champs, not the best run that Optic had at the time. Thought this is interesting as well from the COD League. They bring this out. I mean, it's effectively another comms type thing. But, uh, you know, this comms check, they actually do it the right way this time. As opposed to the Optic versus Face thing. I'm not sure if we're going to be seeing that once again. Also, we talked yesterday about, okay, Dallas played up against, I think this is like the Easter team or something. Fellow Gravity, Jern and John. Players who have been at the top of the professional scene in previous years, apart from Gravity, of course. Here's Fellow dropping 9,000 damage and 60 limbs up against this new Toronto Ultra squad with insight on the teams. That's pretty incredible. This is a very exciting team to watch, I'm sure, in the challenger side. And there's so much room for some of this talent, a lot of which has been at the top tier of the professional scene to get back into the top tier of the Pro League at some point. But of course, hopefully expansion will come next year, certainly. And well, this, of course, are the matches for later today. So, well, we have four days of matches once again, starting on the Thursday, that being in just a couple of hours' time. Dallas versus Paris, Optic versus Rocker today. Two very interesting matches. I think that Empire versus Legion is actually going to be really, really interesting because, look, Empire haven't been looking so good as of late. Paris is certainly a strong team. Optic took down Paris last week, but it wasn't exactly super comfortable. And then the Minnesota Optic match, we've got a, well, Stanley coming into the Rocker for the first time. Certainly not going to be the easiest matchup for them. And Optic looking very good in the respawns with this new map set. But hopefully these series can go the distance and give us a good show and all things considered. Intrigued to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, I'd greatly appreciate a like on the video. It really helps out the YouTube because I know you enjoyed this content. Other people like you may enjoy this content as well. And I've grown the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you for watching as always. Take care. And I will see you next time. Ladies and gentlemen, he is yeah, rock hard. You gotta think if you're a nerd, <clears throat> there's a reason why you step back from competing. 2900 <laughs> damage is not gonna cut it, especially in this caliber of H. You're getting out damaged yeah. by Adam Fat no, Hippo really Meat. You way, gotta man. think he's making excuses. He's wondering what's went wrong. In fact, the excuse he told me was mid game he was chatting with an Amazon support specialist. So <laughs> Wait, he had to. Yeah. Oh, that was, yeah, that's an actual But he is, I though. He is. No, I think it's horrible. That's not because he just came in voice chat and said, hold on, I'm on the phone. And I heard the, I heard the voice. He was on speakerphone. I heard it in the background. Um, he's grasping for straws. He knows he has to make up an excuse. He just dialed Amazon. It's just not what you want to see. We're going to head over <clears> to Nables <throat> for a post game <clears throat> interview and an analysis. <laughs> and Nables gameplay. Anthony Wheeler, you're obviously one of the most seasoned veterans in Call of Duty. What are your thoughts right now? After seeing that gameplay from Enable. Wow, I'm my <laughs>